Yes. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well, good evening, everyone. Like Bo was saying, we're going to start with the transportation facility. Um, to give you a little bit of context as far as where the transfer, transportation site is going to be located, um, here is the Maynard ISC administration building located here off 290. Transportation site is going to be located here just north of Howard Lane and just west of 130. Uh, taking a closer look here, looking at the site plan here. So here's Harris Branch Parkway. So the main entrance into the uh, site will be off Harris Branch Parkway and you have two drives. First drive will take you to the driver parking and visitor parking that's in front of the uh, transportation facility building. Then behind on the other side is the bus parking along with the White Fleet parking. Then back here on the back is the fuel depot which will have unleaded, unleaded and diesel uh, fuel tanks for the buses. And come a little closer here to the uh, floor plan for the transportation facility. Uh, the main entrance is right here. And this would be on the uh, bus driver and visitor parking side here. So the visitors will come and enter the building here at this point. And then over here is two large training rooms um, for the bus drivers. And what's nice about this space and these training rooms is that they can be used uh, after hours as well by the district for other purposes. Um, and it's also nice because it's located on this side of the building so it could be closed off and not have access to the rest of the office because that could be blocked off here by these set of doors. Um, so the office area for the transportation is pretty much the area you see here highlighted in red where you have the transportation director's office as, other, as well as other uh, transportation staff offices. Now the other half of the building here I'm circling is the service bay area. You have eight service bays for the buses. And then you have uh, men's and women's uh, locker rooms and restrooms as well, and some additional storage and office space in that half of the building. And moving forward here is an kind of overall perspective, looking down at the build building where you see the bus parking in the back as well as the fuel depot uh, stations back here and the main entry into the uh, transportation facility here into the office and training rooms on the side. Here's just a perspective from the ground level here, looking at the main entry with some handicapped parking spaces out front. Then kind of circling around here, this would be at the bus service area where you have right next to the service bay area is an outdoor uh, wash bay for the buses, which essentially acts as like a car wash except for buses, but you can actually take the your white fleet and vehicles, not only buses, but the white fleet and vehicles to go through the bus wash as well. And it's just kind of circle around to the back of the building. This is some of the office spaces and dispatch area facing the uh, bus parking lot area there where you see the windows there. And then again, here's another perspective image at the front of the bus uh, service entry into the bus service space along with the uh, wash system for the buses. Now I know I went through it pretty quick, but does anyone have any uh, questions pertaining to the transportation facility? Uh, this is Vicki McFarland. I have a question. Will the current facility also still remain in use? Yes, ma'am. We, we will be looking at uh, reutilizing re re that facility for some um, other areas of growth that we have in the district. But it will not be a bus. It wouldn't be used for transportation anymore. This facility will be used for it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In the chat, Mr. Hermes is asking, where the location is going to be. Uh, Cody, if you can go back to the first slide to just show the location. Yes. So everybody see the Google Earth image here, the map, site map. So the location for the transportation site is located here. It's just north of Power Lane and just west of 130. OK. If, uh, any more questions? And how many buses does uh, the district currently have? 125. Wow. And this facility is large enough to hold all of those? Yes, ma'am. And with the room for uh, additional um, buses as well. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so the site plan, oh, sorry. Yeah, site plan is we're showing 150 bus spaces 
And then we're also showing additional future bus parking, additional 50 spaces as well for future. Wow. Um, Mr. Hermes is asking, are you concerned on the location as it seems to be far north of Main or ISD district mapping, but we would want a central location? Um, with this location, um, it's it, what we are concerned about is access to and from e easy access. So as you notice, um, we can we are able to get move buses out and either go to the right and come around to 130 or take a left and get on to, to 290. So um, the, the area that we have will allow buses to be able to move back and forth without creating um, any traffic jams or any congestion um, in that area. So we're, we're very comfortable that this location would be able to service our buses um, quite efficiently. And how many acres is this piece of land? It is 35 acres. It's 35, 35 acres. acres. And we're, yes, ma'am. And we're not utilizing all 35 acres. So there's room for, for growth there if necessary down the, down the road. And this 35 acres um, has already been purchased by the district? Yes, this it's currently owned by the district. Owned by the district, yeah. Ms. Moore is asking or saying uh, in the chat, I would love to see a transportation employee of the month spot up front by the disabled parking, allow scholars and parents to give praise and input. Okay. Thank you for that. We, we will definitely be taking that up to um, our committee. Thank you for that uh, input. Any more? questions before we move on to our early college building. Let's see, we have answered all the questions in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, if no more questions, then we'd like to move on. Thank you very much, uh, Cody, for that information. And we'll now turn it over to Bo um, to talk to us about early college. Yes, sir. Can you see the, the slide that's up there right now? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we should have given you a little bit more background. Where we are in the process right now is what you're seeing on these presentation slides are the schematic design. And this is basically the culmination of all of our meetings that we've had with district staff and district uh, administration um, to get to this point. So they've had, um, in our presentation the other night with the board, uh, Jackie from transportation, Dr. Sadakova from early college um, said a few words uh, about the design process. So if y'all are wondering, uh, they have, there's been a lot of input just to get to this point. So this is the location. Um, there's two options for the early college that we presented to the board. One is for 600 students and one is for 800 students. Uh, this is the location uh, that the campus, the early college uh, campus will be at, uh, located next to the senior high school. Uh, uh, this location helps take advantage of the parking that's already there and also is close access to the senior high. And option number one, uh, it's a, it's a, both options are two story. Um, and this option for 600, basically what you're looking at is this would be the front entry where my cursor is right here. Uh, there's a secure entrance where visitors would have to check in to the administration area, the office area, before being allowed to proceed into the building. So you have a secure area here. This is the office area small work, uh, not a small, but a workroom, break room back here in the back, uh, book room up front. And then this would be the classroom area in here. Uh, a larger view of that, uh, so you can see some of the spaces. Again, front entry here, administration, office area here, 
And then all of this would be the student area, student commons area, and some of the specialty classrooms. On the second floor, there's more classrooms and then some science labs, a computer lab, some other areas up here. And there's another restroom bank upstairs as well. Some renderings of what this option one would look like. Uh, this would be this would be the uh, the main entry area that we were looking at off of the parking. This building right here is the black box area of the senior high school. This is kind of a view. Uh, we've got several different views here of this option, uh, more of a approaching from a, a, a lower standpoint here. Uh, this would be pretty much at eye level walking into the building. That's the end of the, <clears throat> this would be the end of the classroom wing here where the stairs would be located. This is from the inside looking back out towards the parking lot. Dr. Yearwood looks like somebody needs to mow the grass there. Just a heads up on that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, commons area inside of option number one. Some uh, breakout spaces in the corridor. And option number two, this one's a little bit larger. This would be for 800. Uh, the front entry area changes a little bit. Instead of that uh, bigger grasser area, this is a more developed courtyard and student commons area up front. Uh, office area remains about the same, workroom about the same, book room and restroom area. All this area is very similar. Uh, the classroom area, you can see the additional classrooms over here to get you up to 800. Um, also, there would be an assistant principal's office out here on this end of the building. A little bit larger view again, so you can see the spaces. All the same spaces are there in option one and option two. The biggest difference is that there's additional classrooms to accommodate the additional 200 students. And then the student commons area, the public area, um, is a little bit larger in option two. This would be the second floor, again over here, assistant principal up here. Here's some renderings of what that space would look like. You can, you can see a big difference out here in the front in this courtyard area. There's some outdoor seating in this option. Uh, back here, uh, one of the concepts that we're looking at is having some uh, big open doors in this space. So your commons area becomes kind of an indoor outdoor uh, gathering area, which is pretty neat. That you're looking at right there, this area in here. More developed uh, commons area out here in option number two. That's the front door. Another shot of this area. This is kind of standing right on the edge. These are the folding uh, doors, the uh, windows that we were talking about uh, that would slide back and forth and open this space up so you could be indoors and outdoors. Another view there from the other side. These are some breakout areas, some smaller classrooms, uh, collaboration areas. Another breakout space off, in the, off the corridor there. And that's it. Um, the last slide here is just a rough development of the uh, of the schedule here. And uh, like I say, that area in yellow, the schematic design um, is kind of where we are right now. 
Next will be the design development. Uh, moving forward, if we're approved on schematic design and design development, then we start building these buildings on paper and then we bid them. And then the schedule right now, if we can stay um, on this schedule, we're looking at an overall time of 12 to 14 months before everything is complete. So I this do is, have this a is Vicky with some more questions. What is the difference of the square footage of the two options? Um, hang on a second. Let me look at my cheat sheet here. Option number one, we're at about 50,000 square feet. And option number two, we're at about 64,000 square feet. So about 14,000 additional square feet. And then what would the difference of cost be of those two? Right now, uh, where we are with the design phase, we're estimating that it'd be uh, between four and five million additional cost. So the option one would be four million, option five, uh, two would be five million? I'm sorry, that would be the additional cost. Option one, uh, the project budget would be 16 million for total project cost and the option two, if that's the direction uh, that we proceed in, would be another four to five million added on to that. Oh, okay, Ad added on, okay. Yes, ma'am. And I don't think I got to ask the question about the transportation facility. Did we say what a cost would be for that one? Our cost for that is our, our total budget. Budgeted. Go ahead, Ryan, sorry. So, no, that's okay. I was jumping in since you were looking. The budgeted cost for that is eighteen million, and um, with the uh, design that we're looking at now, we uh, have an opportunity to come in under that budgeted cost. And what would be the construction timeline for that one in terms of months? We think that the transportation facility will be done before the early college. Um, if they both get started about the same time, you're looking at probably 12 months uh, for transportation and probably 14 months for early college. And is there a start date on the transportation? Yes, well, uh, let me go back to that schedule. The currently, if we stay on this schedule right now, we would be releasing the drawings to bid in July and hopefully board approval and a guaranteed maximum price in August and then starting middle to the end of August with construction. Okay. What, what was originally allocated for this building cost-wise? For early I'm college, sorry, the original budget. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last part. What, what was well, the original cost of the? It was the early college, right, John? Um, Mayor. Yes. What was the original? Yeah, amount allocated for for this building. The original budgeted mm -hmm. cost was 16 million. So the option one does come in right at at that price point. Okay. So then I guess then. I guess the question would be then is why do we also have the option two, which is going to be over by four million dollars? Is there a reallocation from another area that that was already kind of pre-approved, or is that going to be something that's going to go back to the community to approve a transfer of those four million dollars? Yeah. Um, what has happened there is because we are looking at some overall cost savings um, um, in in other areas, so. There will be some some overages there, but the, the main driver behind this, um, uh, Dr. Wallace, is expansion. We don't want to build a school that would be at capacity in year one. We, I think that has happened previously, and we've learned lessons learned from that several years ago. So what we are attempting to do here is to allow a school to be built that has enough seats that will accommodate the growth that we expect. Um, in, in Maynard, and, and that is what's driving that cost, um, or not cost, but the, the number of seats, the increase in seats for um, this school. 
No, nah, and, and that's what I originally was going to ask the question, but wanted to make sure on the price difference. So if we're going off of the potential growth and the 2.5% growing every year just as a city itself and, 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 and not necessarily understanding the growth that's happening for the district, then why do we have an option one? Why don't we have two different floor plans that are option two that have the 200 additional capacity? Because we had to show that we have done our due diligence with the allocated amount. I mean, we, we wanted to show that, yes, with the amount allocated, this is what we can get for it. And then obviously knowing that that may or may not, because it's not our decision, it's definitely up to the board to make that, to give us that direction. We wanted to show the possibilities of growth with, again, additional funds. So we want to show that we've done a due diligence to say what you've given to us, you know, based upon your decision, may or may not work to what uh, the direction you, uh, the board is going to give us. Got it. No, I appreciate the information. I just recommend that the consultant provide that information up front so then we kind of have a, a better perception and understanding of the two differences, the cost differences, the growth differences. Um, that would be really appreciated up front. Yes, sir. Appreciate that input. Thank you. So Ms. Moore has her hand up, and then we have a question for Mr. Yeah. Hermes, and then Ms. Pearson has her hand up. Yes, go ahead, Go ahead, Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore. Hello, hello. Okay, so I agree with Mayor Wallace. I think that the 600 students is just a complete waste of time. We should definitely be looking at um, a couple of different floor plans, 800 students, but I understand why you guys are giving both. What I didn't see in the diagram is a cafeteria. Did I, did I miss that somewhere? Or are we really thinking that we're going to have these students, i.e. my students, walking across the parking lot in their little small amount of lunchtime area in order to eat. And a long outdoor concept with the, the really pretty um, uh, doors. However, in Texas, it's either really hot or it's really cold. And I don't see how much um, that's, that type of space would be utilized without you know, really running the air condition or the heat in order to be able to use that sliding door effect. Mm -hmm. So, so that was it. Thank you. Things. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Did, did I, um, are you through with the questions, Mrs. Miss Moore? Yes, sir. I'm done. Okay, I'm done for you. now. Okay. All right. The, the first one that you asked about um, cafeteria. Yes, we are actually exploring that right now. That was the direction given to us. If you watched the last um, board meeting, that direction was given to us. So we are definitely exploring that option and. I'm sure we'll be taking that back to the board for consideration um, once you know we're able to get that work through. So absolutely, yes, we are looking at that very, very be a cafeteria with hot food, correct? Not just the yes. space for them to right. eat, but a place for them to have hot food prepared. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. And and then so, the second uh, part of your, your oh, wait, oh, sorry, the go ahead. part so, of your question. The, the second part of your question about the doors being open, obviously, you know, there will be days that will not be conducive to the door being opened and days, you know, where it's definitely hot or, you know, um, cold, the, the doors will be open. But in days that are nice, you know, we have some very nice weather here, we'd be able to definitely enjoy the fresh air and the, 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 the environment. Yes, ma'am. Not today. Not today. No. <laughs> Oh. Five days a Mr. year. <laughs> Mr. Hermes asks, uh, Mr. Hermes' question is, how many students uh, are currently in Maine or Early College High School? Want to consider long-term growth, 800 in comparison to 600 students. Uh, give room for growth without running out of capacity space issue as Maine is continuing to grow. So, um, the answer to that question, Mr. Hermes, is that um, it's a tricky question because currently we're not um, able to admit as many students as are I, applying I, to early college. Brian, hold on, hold on, Mr. Malcolm. Dr. Spencer wants to add. Go ahead, Dr. Spencer. I'm sorry. So the answer to the question right now, we have about 575 young people 
575 of our scholars who are already enrolled at the early college. We have been enrolling anywhere between 75 and 100 scholars in for the upcoming year, but that also means that we have about 75 of our scholars who will be graduating out. So the way that the, pro the projection is um, expected to continue to flow going in that continuum is that we will not reach capacity for about six to seven years out before it even gets to that 800 capacity if we continue to enroll the number of scholars that we have um, enrolling at this point. There is a waiting list to actually get into the school, but with the addition of this 800 space, it would eliminate the existing waiting list that we have in place, which has about 75 scholars on that particular waiting list as well. Okay. Ms. Pearson has her hand up. Uh, yeah, so um, in my experience of both of my children going in the early college, one graduate last year, one's about to graduate, not this year, but next year. I know that when she was going through or applying, it, it came down to a lottery because we just probably didn't have enough space to allow all of the students that applied to it. So my question is, would you still be keeping the space that you have over at the at Maynard High School along with this campus to try and one, keep letting more kids come in as well as maybe not so fast, growing too fast that once you do 800, because I think the 800 is what you need to build, um, fills up faster. So no, we're looking at allowing Maynard High School, the 910 campus to absorb that space because right now they're in need of that space over at the high school 910 campus. But a component to keep in mind with the early college is that many of the scholars at the early college, particularly when they get to the 11th and 12th grade, they're transitioning to the community college for several of their courses. So they're not gonna necessarily be on the campus, which allows for more space and more opportunity. And a second piece to that is we are expanding, actually beginning next year, we are expanding opportunities for more of the community college courses to be taken so that our, our scholars will be able to earn those credits. But that also allows for more opportunity for space at the high school campus because many more scholars will be actually taking courses at the community college. Uh, for a follow-up to that, so as they are going to ACC whenever that they start actually going to classes again at ACC. Is there any chance that some of those ACC classes, maybe the, the basic ones at the beginning are gonna be done at the campus as opposed to them going to Elgin or Riverside, depending on what the campus, the courses? And yes, yeah, and that's ultimately our plan there. We want to be able to open up the campus, the high school campus, to allow for professors to come and teach classes there. Right now, we don't have that agreement in place with ACC, but that is something that we're looking to expand into. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and thank you very much. Any more questions before we move on to a second agenda item? Okay. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Okay. All right, and I would like to share my screen with you. Um, hopefully this would work. Uh, nope. Where is it at? One second. And- Ms. Um, Moore has her hand raised. Go ahead, Ms. Moore, while I'm, okay, there we go. Ms. Pearson actually asked my question. My question was the same about getting the ACC classes to be um, given over at the early college um, rather than the kids having to be transported to ACC Elgin. So she got it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, great questions. This brings us to the second part of the agenda. 
um, which talks about the survey for the K-8 schools. We continue to survey our um, community and our parents, and we will be conducting, so everyone will understand, this is not, this, it's, this is not a closed event. We will have several uh, forums in the community. We will also have more opportunity for surveys. As you can tell, we only have 74 responses and we would like to gather obviously more input from our, our community. And as we look at the K-8 school design, we've been through some of the pros, the cons and things like that. Um, obviously, not every school design is for everyone. Right? There's some students that uh, go with the IB model, the fine arts model, the new tech, and the K-8 model, again, uh, it's, it's not necessarily for everyone, but we wanted to get input by asking several questions about uh, the thoughts from our community and our parents surrounding K-8. So the very first one talks about, am I likely to want to learn more about the K-8 school design? Now, what we did, we showed the video that we presented to the bond, uh, Citizens Bond Committee. Um, we had that uh, 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 keyed up for them and a parent could go into the survey, look at that video, and then uh, they were able to answer these questions um, accordingly. So as, as we looked at answering, as we looked at these questions, one second, please. Um, let me see something here. There we go. As we looked at answering these questions, we were able to actually present, uh, one second, it's loading, right? Um, they were able to take, these are the results from it. So as you can see here, <laughs> the parents had a chance to answer any of these, uh, any of these areas. They can strongly disagree, disagree. Some were neutral, some agreed, and some strongly agreed. And what we wanted to look at was say, okay, how many of our parents say, you know, no, we, we, we're not interested. We kept them in one bucket. We kept in another bucket, the parents that, that are not saying no, they're not saying yes, they can go either way. And also the parents that are actually saying, yes, we agree with this. So I know there's some people may say, well, if they're neutral, they're not really in the positive. Well, we don't know that. And they're not in the negative. But we want to say these are parents that over time, hopefully, will, will come over to the positive side. So when looking at that, the parents that said, well, we are neutral or we may agree, 67% in that bucket. As we move to the next question. That's three, is that that's three or higher, correct? Dr. Yes, that. yes, sir. That's three or higher. Yes, three or higher. It would be 67%. Yes, sir. Next. I believe Mena scholars will benefit from being offered this instruction. Again, three or higher. The ones that scored three or higher, we were at 60% in there. We also looked at, am I likely to send my child to a K-8 campus? We have about 52.7% um, of them with three or higher, scoring three or higher there. Um, I think you gotta scroll your screen down, Dr. Yearwood. We're still seeing the first two questions. Yeah, okay, folks. Your scroll, scroll bar. What's going on here? Why is this thing? One second, please. Never fails. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, go ahead and finish talking us through it so that we can make sure we have time to be able to answer questions. Okay. Not sure why that froze up on us. Okay. Can you all see that now? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Can you all see? Yeah, you can. Okay. All right. One of the questions we wanted to find out about was, I believe a K-8 campus in MENA ISD would alleviate overcrowding issues. And again, as we looked at the numbers across, we have approximately 39, about 60% of our uh, parents saying um, yes, that they would alleviate uh, overcrowding issues. One other question, am I likely to send my child to a K-8 campus? Again, we have here, about 50%, a little bit more, about 60% of our parents saying, yes, we, we are interested or we, we, are, 
we are, we are not 100% sure about scoring three or higher on that. So am I likely to support the design of the K-8 campus here? And again, as we looked at this one, we also had about 60% about saying, yes, we will, we, we may, we, we are either scoring three or higher, we tend to be on the positive end of this. So again, we are not finished yet. The number of survey results that we have at 74, um, we, we're not stopping. We are, we are gonna go, go out and have more forums so we can get gather more information in so we can make a decision based upon, again, our, our community input. So I'd like to stop here at this point and ask for any questions. I guess the only question I have is because it, it was labeled citizens bond survey. Uh, I don't recall seeing it before it went out to the community. So um, yes, well, at, this, at the other at the other meetings that we have had, we've had a survey um, that was posted up at the end of our um, committee meetings that we have had previously. Um, um, uh, Mayor Wallace, I think there was some glitch with the first one, and then we also did it at the second one. So we did put that out during that time, but oh. it's wide open now. So we, we'd love to have your input, you know, in, in this, and it'll continue to be again um, out there so we can continue to draw uh, information from our community and our parents. Cool, thanks. Yes, sir. Any more questions? Has a site been selected for this campus? A, a no. site is, go ahead. No. Just, site. No. no, no, no site has been identified for this campus. We are actually in the process of um, engaging trustees around various sites around the district because we need a location for a campus and we also need a location for our PAC center. Yes. Dr. Hewlett? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, mine is not so much questions rather than just comments. So I know that when you sent the survey out, you said you attached it to a video. How about when we're sending out the survey, we put the, the key bullet points of things that likely interest the parents, right? So one of the things that I asked you guys is, is there a way to get transportation to this K-8 school, especially for Decker Corridor and the, the kids in the country, like my kids? If that's something that we can go with, then that's something that I really think that if you put that on the top of the, the questionnaire to allow parents to understand that they actually have a chance at their kids getting in to this school or for you to say, hey, this is not gonna be one of those lottery type things. This is open to all the kids in the district. I think that that'll go a long way because as I'm talking to uh, friends of mine, they, they have no idea what a K-8 school is, what it offers, and if their kids can even get into it. So they didn't pay attention to the, the survey in the first place. Okay, that was it. That. Thank you. And um, as we do the next, I think we have, there'll be about three forums coming up. Um, for community and parents, and hopefully we'll get a chance to really get into that. So really appreciate that input. That's important. Thank you. That's good. All right. Anyone else? Hi, this is Ms. Pearson. My my other my question to this is: I know you sent the survey out. I'm assuming it was sent out to every parent, um, basically in the district. But my question to that is: shouldn't this be really sent out to elementary slash middle school parents, especially pre-K and K parents, because whenever this finally gets done, they're the ones that are kids that are gonna have kids that could possibly go into it. And maybe there needs to be some more uh, more communication with those parents so for them to get more input for them because I mean, I got the input, I got the survey, but my kids are gone. And I don't have any more kids that are gonna be going through K through eight. So it's really, I think you need to really talk to those elementary middle school parents to get more input from them to see, you know, to see what they really think about it. Maybe you'll get more responses that way. Thank you. And uh, actually, 
Um, I'm glad you said that. Just this past week, um, also, um, Dr. Spencer, that was his uh, uh, direction to us. We are going to target uh, the schools. We, in other words, we will be presenting to against certain parts of schools and the elementary schools that will be notified and parents will be invited out. So that way we can start capturing um, a lot of that information from them. So absolutely right. We, we, we have to start targeting them. So thank you for that. Great. All right. It looks like we don't have any more questions. So I would like to... Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. There, Go ahead. There's another question here. Um, where will this? Oh, wait a minute. Where will this be located? I missed the first slide. And as far as the location, no location has been identified at this particular point. That's also contingent upon the land acquisition work that has to be done with trustees. Um, there's another question. Are you concerned on the location? as that seems to be far north. Oh, maybe I'm reading questions from the, pre <laughs> from the previous uh, presentation. I think that's what I'm doing. I think I'm reading questions from the previous presentation. But let me yeah. look and see. Okay, we have one more. Um, what, okay. time, what, timeline make, what timeline is needed to make decisions on the K-8 school as no, as no been, I'm not sure what this thing, but as something that's being discussed, survey for a while already, asking a timeline with 2019, five-year bond expenditure, and we are in 2021 now, asking this as a decision-making would need to come soon, but seems like want more survey results inflow. So I'm presuming the question is around why are why are we still soliciting additional input via surveys and not just making a decision around the K-8? And the, the response to that is, we really wanna get input and insight from our community around this decision so that we can make certain that we are providing trustees with enough information to be able to make informed decisions. We do understand and recognize that timing is of essence. We aren't behind time with the K-8 um, decision-making at this point because we still have to find location. We still also have to build the campus. So we're still looking at two years out before, at least two years out before the K-8 campus would be accessible for scholars and for staff. So we really aren't behind time, but we do want to make certain that we capture as much feedback around this topic as we can. And, and Mr. Hermes, if I didn't answer the question, you can pop another question in the chat and I'll be sure that we get an answer to it. Okay. I think yeah, that's exhausted all questions in the chat. So that's good. Okay. Um, uh, that's the a, a quick announcement. Dr. Wood, if you don't I'm sorry, mind, sir? what I, Yes, if you don't mind, what I think would be um, a good opportunity is as we're planning to go to various communities to share information about K-8, but also to solicit their input, I'll just open up the offer for our parents that if you are interested in participating in the presentation alongside staff, then that's an amenable option for you. Um, please let us know so that we could definitely have your voice at the in the conversation so that parents will be able to hear from you because you have scholars in, in our district as well. So that would be great if you're amenable to participating. Okay, thank you, sir. That, that'll be, be great. So that brings us to the, the end of our forum. Just a quick announcement. We are very excited that we will be unrolling our dashboard um, that talks to our projects, our timelines, our expenditures. We'll be putting up in, in 
fairly real time the progress of our projects as they're being constructed. There'll be opportunities on that dashboard for parents to ask questions and have their questions answered and for input if, if there's a comment that um, needs to be made. So in full transparency, uh, Mr. Vidal, who is our chief communications officer has been working uh, very diligently behind the scenes to make this dashboard become a reality. And he's, he's almost there. Um, um, is Mr. Vidal uh, present with us this evening? I don't think he's, no, he's, he's not. I am. I am. Do you want to just mention about that? Because that's going to be a very key feature in us maintaining our transparency with our expenditures and with our construction um, so that everyone can see exactly what's happening. You want to talk any, say anything about that before we, we stop? Yes, sir. I sure will. If you'd give me one second, I'll actually sh also share my screen. So I'd like to give everyone just a, a brief preview of what was presented earlier this week at today's this week's board meeting. Pardon me. So earlier this week, can everybody see my screen there? Yes, sir. Yes. So this here is what we're calling the Maynard ISD 2019 Bond Projects Dashboard. There is a page where this will live on our website currently. I'll navigate to it to show you how you can access this page. So everybody on this committee will know where this information lives. So you can go over to departments and then you see under the B here, bonds and construction. And then you see this tab right here on the left-hand side, 2019 bond dashboard. I've placed this placeholder here in the meantime for us to be able to know where the dashboard will live once it does go live. As Dr. Yearwood has mentioned, my team and I have been working very hard to make sure that it doesn't have any kinks or anything in the actual function of the system. And up until I've ironed out all of those little nuances, I wanna make sure that y'all have access to it. So this is where the dashboard will live on the website. And in the meantime, y'all can find all of the information that we'll be populating related to the bond for all of the projects and constructions that, that has already been completed and is being currently done in the district. You'll be able to find all of those updates here. And we, we are calling the bond community hub just under the bond dashboard page. So we're going over to the hub itself. So this is what the hub is going to look like. So hmm. not sure what that was, but we'll allow this. There we go. So that's our actual chart of the actual uh, timeline and budget constraints for each uh, actual bond and construction projects. As you can see, when I hover over each one of these, you'll see it labels the campus furniture refresh, the main or new tech concession stand, as you note on that on this one specifically, it denotes that's the proposed timeline. And then we have the Shadow Glen driveway upgrade and then the Maynard New Tech High School concession stand actual timeline. So we'll be updating these. My team and I will go in here and actually color code these. The reason for, for that being that it should line up cohesively with these tags over here on the right hand side of uh, orange being phase one for design, this lighter blue being phase two for bid this kind of pink colorish uh, being phase three for award, the darker blue being phase four for construction, and this uh, yellow gold color here, five for complete. So this will be representative inside of each one of these timeline lines for you to see where exactly each one of these bond projects, construction projects is relative to the timeline today and in relativity to their full construction project timeline. And as well as you'll be able to sort where they are in each bond phase. These are currently the only ones that we have for the ones that are listed, but you'll be able to see their status as well as whether they're complete, under construction, in their design phase, in their bid phase. All of that will be pre-populated here that you will be able to sort even by campus, for example. So I'll, I'll show, for example, let's pull up only the ones that are complete. So here we can see that we have the campus furniture refresh and the, oh, I'm sorry about that and the Shadow Glen Elementary School driveway upgrade. So once we sort it to which projects were complete, it does sort onto over all of those. And then we can go into which ones are currently under construction. So for example, here you see the Maynard New Tech High School construction proposed plans and the actual timeline. 
So if you noted when I made that switch, you see how some of these numbers move around. That's because the numbers over here on the left hand side, as you can see, this is the current budget proposed for the Maynard New Tech High School concession stand. That is the total amount that has been committed thus far in construction and the remaining balance for where we are at um, at this point in construction as well. And these numbers are updated as often as possible by myself, Dr. Yearwood, and, and Mr. Ryan Markham, our director of bonding construction. So that team, well, in conjunction with myself and our fine, uh, not our fine arts, our our finance team have all come together and collaborated from putting together this easy to use tool so that you can have access to know how much exactly each budget costs. And, and although that these numbers may be incorrect at this time, we'll make certain that, as we mentioned, we make all good faith efforts to ensure that we provide accurate and current information to all viewers. So we'll make certain that we do our own um, basically research and ensuring that all of the information present on the dashboard is accurate. And then from the dashboard itself, you can access the actual bonds and construction website. Just click on this little tab down here and it'll take you back over to the site once this does go live. So are there any questions that I can help answer for anybody this evening about the bond dashboard? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vidal. And just leave that for one second. So very, very important. The, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says bond 2019 interest area on let's stop. This will be an area that you can come in and ask questions, make comments, and tell us what's going on. And the reason that we're doing this is so that there would no longer be a need for, for us to have meetings we because we have so much going on we have a, we have a ton of things going on but it's going to be critical that we hear from each of you regarding these projects so going forward we are going to ask that you put your information in and 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 give us feedback in this bond 2019 so that we can continue to learn and to to get information from from you as a community representative as a parent going forward, because this is a team effort. And we definitely uh, want to work with you as a team to ensure that we are addressing any of your concerns. So again, this will be the medium now that anyone and each of you, please, I implore you, look at this, give us your feedback. So that way going forward, we will know exactly, you know, maybe there's some things we need to look at or some some directions we need to look at and things like that. Dr. Yearwood, there are a couple yes. of comments that are in the chat that I'd like to read. Yes. Ms. Moore has shared, love it, great work, thank you. Ms. Moore for that feedback. Mr. Hermes has said, I appreciate this as this goes long way to improve transparency with community on bond usage. Thank you, Mr. Hermes. Um, I don't see any other comments that are in the um, chat right now. Do you, do we have an anticipated rollout date for when we expect this would be live? Dr. Yearwood? Um, we anticipate that this will come live by the end of uh, February. We will have this up and running and this will be live by February the 20, where should I give the, the 28th. That's our drop dead date. February the 28th. Are we going to meet that date? If we're putting that out there. <laughs> yes, sir. We will meet and beat mm -hmm. that date, actually. That's our intent. Yes, sir. That That is the intent. So, so thank you, Dr. Yerwood. Okay. So I will wholeheartedly make sure that we do. Um, and that is for the English version. As I did mention at the, the board meeting on Monday, just to, to keep in line with our transparency and communication tools, I wanna to make certain that this dashboard is also present in Spanish. So we, we will be making a fully translated version as well that will be available also on our website. Yes. And Ms. Gildart is here and she is, you know, I call it uh, pushing us and, and driving us forward. So thank you for that, Ms. Gildart, thank you. All right, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you for your time and giving us, you know, of your, your intellectual capacity and having great questions and dialogue. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great rest of the evening. Thank you. Okay. Okay.
Hey, Mrs. Samaripa, how are you? 